Welcome to E4M Creative Zone. My guests today are not just iconic ad makers, but I call them as creatives who have shown the industry the power of product innovations and providing real business solutions to clients. More importantly, they are creatives. They are one of the few creatives who say it how it is. So I'm pleased to welcome with us today Kaval Shur and Naveen Talreja from the Boom. Hi, hi, hi Kaval. How, hi, Naveen. How are you holding up the uh, lockdown? Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. It's all good. Super. Just all about good. getting go down for a walk, so that helps. <laughs> so, firstly, I want to speak to you about how have you been grappling up with shooting and creating amidst remote captivity? Ah, okay. <laughs> Whoever would like to take that no, up. So, yeah, no, so... Um, I think it's been a journey. I don't think it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's changed since the time we started. Uh, so we have uh, shot a couple of pieces, uh, one for Sipla, which uh, Good Morning Films and Bob shot. Uh, that was typically in our Indian way, uh, a Jugad shoot uh, done. So, so Bob literally found a, <coughs> found a, uh, whose dad was a DOP and whose mom was an art director and they shot in that house and Bob <coughs> sort of, excuse me, directed that film over Zoom and then we made that other film for Saregama with the Saregama in-house team. Um, but that was, I think, uh, Saregama was about three weeks ago, uh, Sipla was, I think, another five weeks ago. Uh, but now we are pretty much uh, normal in the way shoots are happening. So we're shooting something for another client of ours uh, next Monday, Tuesday in Goa, actually. Uh, oh, wow. So that's a normal shoot. Uh, normal, normal in the sense that normal right. with all the with all the rules being followed with regards to, uh, you know, 33% crew and so on and so forth. But it's a normal shoot. It's a full-fledged shoot, which Amit, Amit Sharma from Chrome is shooting for us. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's how it's, it's sort of transpired. Uh, <clears throat> we've uh, continued to work. Except for the physical proximity, we've continued to work uh, as we would have if we were all in office. So we've continued to do the strategic pieces. We've continued to do the creative development uh, in a way so that we'll be ready to shoot when the lockdown opens up. So we have a f uh, five or six sort of campaigns in the period group. Um, and all at different stages of production. So in some cases, we have the PPM. In some cases, we're working towards it. But yeah, largely that's that's how it's transpired in the last sort of uh, couple of months. Oh, amazing! And you're finally traveling to Goa as well. So traveling don't after know. long and shooting after long physically. I don't know. Don't know if we are traveling yet, but uh, right. we're shooting for sure. So that that we we figuring out. Yeah. Exciting! Super. So uh, many industry people I've spoken to have told me that this is not a typical scenario where you know a client gives you a brief and you go back to them all the time. Many times agencies are just going back to their clients uh, with uh, some kind of solution. It's something that the brand can do in this scenario. So in terms of your work for Sarigama Garoran, I wanted to understand that uh, did you come up with that idea or did Caravan, like Sarigama Caravan come up with a brief to you and how did it all come together? If you can just take us to that. Because that's a beautiful no, piece of work. You want to go for it? No, go for it. No, so, uh, okay, so, I mean, we've spoken about this in the past, Misba. <clears throat> we don't work typically how agencies work with clients. So we are very sort of uh, deeply involved with what the clients are doing on a daily basis. So really, uh, it's not, uh, you know, in these COVID times or non-COVID times, we never sort of, we don't expect a client to give us a brief. Mm -hmm. yeah? We don't expect a client to give us a brief. And that's across clients, not just Sarigama. It's across clients. So this as an opportunity came up because that was the reality. Oh, older people, uh, the, the senior citizens were, while others were still being allowed to sort of move around and move out with mask and all the necessary protection, the senior citizens, uh, it was very clear that the mandate was that they cannot move out of the house. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so I think in that sense, it was an opportunity that, ex that came through. Uh, the client and we spoke about it. We felt it's an opportunity for us to uh, you know, try and in a way alleviate uh, this loneliness and boredom uh, that 
the older generation is going to uh, struggle with. The brand has always been about that. It has been a, a loneliness buster. Old songs have that ability to do that. So in a, in a way, it all sort of fell together in place. So uh, to go back to your question, was it a brief or did we go proactive? I think it was a conversation based on opportunity or something that came up in the environment and uh, we co-created that piece with the client. Right. So the lockdown took us all by surprise and uh, so uh, I just wanted to understand now, uh, are you all uh, still working from home and what were the initial hiccups when you first started working from home? What were the like the, you know, the operational challenges that you guys were facing and how is it now? Go girl. Uh, uh, I think it was the, it was the same for all of us, Ms. Uh Nobody, none of us, <coughs> was in an environment like this, worked from home before March 17th. March 18th was one sexy term that we thought people would, you know, right. would, we would do it. Uh, we had never thought that this would become a way of life, and. Uh, while we are not averse to technology, uh, like many people uh, uh, who would be our age, we are actually very happy to embrace technology. But the thing with technology is that, you know, when you're remote conversing with people, uh, it may be okay for certain businesses like in accounts and finance, uh, where you do the work and you just come in for meetings, meetings are very transactional, it's easier to do conversations uh, remotely. But our business is slightly different because our business is built on conversations and it's actually built on small talk or uh, not even big talk. Big talk happens, yes. But it's the small talk where people let down their guard when they expose themselves, when they're naked with their expressions, with their emotions, uh, is when something new comes out. And actually we realized initially that Zoom or whatever technology you use was the enemy of small talk because the conversations were very purposive. Yeah, and uh, it took us a while uh, for everybody to st start, you know, in a way, chatting uh, in the casual sense. Uh, but I think over a period of time, we've become comfortable with it. Uh, so much so that I think we end up working more now. Uh, because even the gap between meetings is not available. So you would travel from one client office to another and you'd have that 45 minute for yourself, uh, now it's just back to back. It's, it's just relentless. And by the end of the day, you, I mean, you're pretty fagged out. Uh, so in a way, it's productive. Uh, we're also realizing the benefits of uh, you know not having to travel to cities uh, to have a meeting. So those are great things. Uh, in the last week or 10 days, we realized that look, we had a great conversation we, uh, our teams hadn't cracked the beef, right? And then we asked some people to hold, stay back on the call while the rest left. And then we said, yeah, kya ho ra? Matlab, uh, is there something that's you know coming in the way? Is the beef not working? Uh, and that half an hour actually was fantastic because we just spoke about the little things. And uh, Naveen and I then later chatted, yeah, ye cheez apna miss kar rahe uh, when it comes to together in the office. Uh, so yes, in most creative industries which depend on collaboration, not just ours, I think the power of the small talk, you can't underestimate. And that happens best when people are together. Uh, right. We are making do with what we can do. <coughs> Ideally, we'd rather be together. Right. So I've no, I'll just add that. Yes, I'll just add quickly one sentence. I mean, small talk, usually when we, we you know, we both sit in the same room in the office, right? Uh, now we are fixing meetings with each other. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are fixing times with each other, which is, which is not normal at all. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, something, I mean, we've known each other for more than now 12 years. And it's, it's been only in these three months that we've had to take an appointment with each other to have a mm -hmm. conversation. You know, which is bizarre. Yeah. Tell me about it. It's been very tough. I've been talking to Mariam and she's like, I can't get these people together at the same time. It'll be very difficult for me. So, yeah. 
so uh, my next question i've always called the boom as a fiercely independent agency and right now we'll put a great show at uh, epis uh, as uh, one of the most independent agency epis asia pacific so uh, i know that the boom doesn't work for awards but what do you think what do you think has uh, worked in your favor and how did you crack this code how do you crack crack the epis code maybe and what do you attribute this to really would you want to go yeah go go uh actually you know uh, miss bobby got to know about it we didn't plan for it we got to know about cracking it. any code yeah we didn't there's no code to crack we got to know about it when we were working with some client and i happened to browse through uh, one of these industry websites and uh, we were oh shit the room spun the most of them Right. most effective agency awards uh so there is no but there's no code to crack uh one thing which is great and one thing which we'd like to change so one thing which is great is that saregama karwa has contributed a lot to us winning that because being quite a landmark i wouldn't call it a campaign is just the entire initiative from the product to the campaign and so on and so forth and the success is part of the market uh we're very happy about that there were a couple of other brands that contributed to our uh, to our ranking uh but so that's great but what we'd like to change and we know that's not true uh that there are about 13 14 clients that we work with and we know that for each of those clients we've done a first class product whether it's on strategy or on creative but for various reasons and you you know i mean it's natural sometimes the budgets are not good enough sometimes right. uh, different things come in uh, so many of the other pieces of our work hasn't gained traction as much uh, yeah. that is the thing we'd like to change uh, because we know that's not true uh, but it's okay you know even if you were to look at the biggest agencies not just in india but around the world and if you were to look at the brands that contribute to their fame and to their success you can actually count the brands on the fingers of one hand uh and you can i don't want to name names uh, right. uh and you know in a good way you know because uh that's true that's true everywhere in the world whether it's a widen that became famous for uh nike it was a droga in uh New York, which famous, which became famous for Under Armour and a few or three others, it always happens that way, uh, where you wish that all of your clients uh, keep hitting jackpot at the effectiveness awards, uh, and you plan for that. Uh, hopefully, there'll be a day when that happens. Uh, but on winning the effectiveness uh, independent agency in Asia. In, in a way it's just a reaffirmation of where we started from uh no we okay so just to put things in perspective we don't hate awards there's there's nothing to hate about uh uh everybody likes to uh, you know go on to the stage uh, but you should go on to the stage for the right things uh, mm. when you really deserve it when the world thinks yes you deserve to be on the stage yeah uh we wouldn't want to be on the stage for things that we're at a certain you know uh award show and clients outside don't even know about it or don't even bother or care about it. that's not something we would get so we're very happy You may have to just repeat yourself a challenge. Miss Pag, were you there or you dropped off? There was there was a lag, so uh, okay. but I got most of it.
I got okay. So I was just saying that if you if you just speak to our clients, the one thing they'll vouch for is that we do not move forward without having pers personally spoken to consumers, understood the problem, tried to find various ways to solve the problem. Uh, so there's a there's a degree of I think integrity uh, to uh, the solution that we provide the clients with, um, and because of that, uh, because of the because of the process that's been followed and the integrity with which we approach it. More often than not, clients uh, have reposed their faith in the solutions that we are offering them. And those solutions have gone on and sort of uh, been effective in the market with regards to business, which has gone on and helped us win. Yeah. So I also want to now understand that, uh, you know, how a client budgets now and how have your clients responded to this situation? Are clients finally ready now to spend or are they still tightening their purse strings? So what is your general mood like? Because a lot of big events got cancelled, production, TV shows are not happening, it's stopped and all that. So now where are marketers investing in as things open up? And what is really happening to these allotted budgets? Where do you see them going? And what is the general mood like? Uh, I think it's different. Uh, uh, I think it's different across categories. I mean, if you look at pharma essential uh, items, then uh, the mood is not so sort of despondent. Um, even I, I would say in general, most marketers, at least the ones who are working with us are now sort of raring to get back, get mm. back to sort of, uh, you know, communicating about themselves and getting the business going because in many ways you pretty much lost one quarter. So you have now nine months to make up uh, what you would have otherwise done in 12 months. And therefore uh, there is intent. I, uh, we can feel that uh, from marketers and clients uh, saying we'd like to now move on and do stuff. Um, and we can sense that because I mean, I'm simple, like I said in the beginning, we are in the midst of five or six productions waiting uh, to get on. Yeah. Uh, I think the challenge is in, 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 in and what may be stopping them at, if at all is uh, just this uh, gradual opening up of the country at the gradual distribution. Uh, what will also hold them back in some categories is the consumer sentiment of wanting to go to a store and shop. Yeah. Right. Um, whether it is for a, for a can of deodorant or it is for a white good uh, sort of product. Yeah. So that consumer sentiment is something that's, that's, everybody's looking for everybody, everybody's watching out for to say uh you know will consumers come back to the store so on and so forth so if you look at china us yes they've come back but um Like you said, television, uh, the GECs, television shows are just about getting shot. And they, I would say it will take about a month uh, for new episodes to start coming through for women to sort of go and start watching those stuff. From a male audience perspective, there is no sport happening. Uh, and uh, sports and news typically or movies tend to be the big sort of genres in which the male audiences uh, are advertised for. Uh, and there is no sport. This conversation about some India South Africa series happening in August. There's some conversation about IPL happening. I think if those events happen, you will see uh, advertisers coming back uh, and spending uh, substantially enough. Uh, I would say in terms of awareness uh, or uh, the share of voice that they would have would be high. The share of expenditures would be high, except that maybe uh, the rates themselves. I don't know how the demand supply equation would work out at that time, but the rates themselves might be slightly suppressed uh, depending on the properties that are being advertised uh, okay. if, I, if, I, if I were to just add uh, and, and this situation does not apply equally to all categories today so yeah. if you were to look at so, uh, online education for instance that's going month on month not just right. month on month. yeah uh, you look at uh, dairy and cookies and biscuits going yeah uh, but on the other hand you look at big ticket items like uh, automobiles, real estate, uh, they're not. 
Uh, a lot of categories that are used outside the house obviously are not. Uh, so even let's say for instance a deodorant, uh, if you're not stepping out of the house, then that category has has a lesser role to play. In life. Uh, so the situation hasn't been the same for everyone. For for some, it has been actually very good because people like for instance. Uh, people sitting at home and consuming a lot of junk stuff is coming through in some of the researches we are doing. Right. Because we don't have anything to do. Things like uh, technology, so uh, laptops and printers and you know, those kind of things are uh, on the rise. But social categories and high ticket categories are two that have suffered more. So the situation has led to far more uh, digital adoption. While digital was already having a moment, now it's uh, increasingly, you know, a lot of even creative agencies are getting into digital and they are getting into things like uh, social engagement, enhancement of social engagement, lead generation and all that. It's no more about tracking the, just, just tracking a TVC. So while there are already agencies that specialize in this situation, how equipped are creative agencies now to take on these things? Yeah, I don't want to comment on any other agency. I We have always believed that you need to stay close to what your specialization and your core expertise is. I mean, yes, everybody can do everything. Uh, we can get into lead generation, we can get into everything. Um, but uh, our job, as we define it, uh, for brands that work with the boom is to provide strategic direction, big brand platforms that can then get executed across different mediums, right? Uh, we do a few mediums, we do a lot of digital, but yes, I mean, we don't get into it sort of uh, performance marketing or whether it's lead generations, we don't do that. And I don't think uh, we would ever want to go into that area because we are not the experts at it. We would partner with, a, if a client says, listen, I need a campaign that will generate leads, we would partner with the best Mm. sort of lead generation company, learn from them and we co-create with them for the client. Uh, and that, that's something that we've done through the five years as and when clients have come to us with different sort of needs uh, that they have. We've partnered with the best that's available in the industry. Um, but to do everything on your own, I think that's old world thinking. I think the time today is of collaboration. Uh, right. You know, one agency having all services and a client expected to, uh, you know, use all the services you don't have the best talent in all the services. So, you know, in a way you're actually just in some cases offering BS to clients and that's something that we don't do. Right. So my last question is that, you know, COVID-19 is a humanitarian crisis and many award shows have spoken about not factoring in work specially created for these times. So what would be your take on how brands and agencies can create a conversation on COVID-19 without being exploitative and just using it as a mere marketing product? So I think there are two questions, right, right Mizba? One yeah. is uh, about awards. Uh, I think it's... I'm just trying to find the most polite word. <laughs> I think it's a... It's a... It's a stupid conversation to have. Whether we should right. use this year's work to be entered in awards. I'm sorry, there are many freaking people who have died. Exactly. And we are concerned about, you know, which, what work will enter, which award show and largely this is creative. And I know which show you're talking about. Right. Uh, I think, you know, I think we should not waste our time in this interview talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's bullshit. Uh, your second question, can you just repeat that? Uh, I didn't get that. Well, I don't know if you pick that up. Uh, so it's just about, you know, many brands want to be a part of the conversation as, as in they just want to be a part of that conversation. But at the same time, what do you say? What do you say? And how much do you say at this time when it is a humanitarian crisis? And how do you say it without being exploitative? Yeah. Kavar, you want to just talk about that journey? Kavar? Uh, journey from the beginning to uh, now, what's happened? Uh, no. Yeah, so we're doing, uh, we're doing some work with consumers and uh, uh, on this situation, on, on the COVID situation. In fact, we were, lucky to have, we were lucky to have an idea 
uh, on the day the lockdown was announced for the first time so uh, in a way we we you know we got together uh, on the same night when it was announced and the next morning uh, we started off conversations with about 60 consumers across different kinds of segments so from blue collar to factory workers to maids to white collar to you know home makers and so on and so forth what we've done is we you know we went to them on the first day we went to them in the middle of the lockdown and we went to them on the 60th day to look at how human minds change over a period of time on the same issues so the things that were exciting initially how are they like right now so i just you know deviated from the question that you asked to say that look there is some work happening on understanding where india is and indian hearts are vis-a-vis the lockdown uh, so we don't want to become armchair commentators and you know look at social media feeds and give give you my two bit on where india is and the advertising industry should so there's some real work happening hopefully in a week or so we should be able to share that uh but you know on how should brands become a part of this conversation uh i just personally think it's a very pathetic it's i mean i sympathize with those brands who think like this right uh uh you know brands need to sell and i think consumers can call a bluff from a mile now uh, so if and if you're doing an honest job selling and i think you know people are saying you know we need to be sensitive and we need to make ads that reflect the current sentiment i can tell you we've been in touch with all these consumers they are sick of sick and dying and uh, and a human being can't take that for too long now uh if you ask me of all the stuff that has happened by other agencies and i've seen a lot of covid related you know work that's come out for some reason i just love the seemingly mindless work that amul seems to be doing on chas and lassi and it's trying to sell right. it's just such a relief to see some happy faces on the screen i really don't care what the quality of creative is and the quality of storytelling is uh of connecting emotionally with consumers uh in a way that sells their products is even more important now and i just want to you know so there's a fluffy things like brand purpose and all those things surrounding us nowadays the purpose of the brand is to build the client's business right that's it there's that's no other it. reason all consumers can do without the brands that they use all consumers so if you ask consumers a question are ye brand agar tumhari life se chala gaya to tumhe kuch farak pade nobody will care or care to hoots about brands right. they will find other things yeah maybe an apple uh maybe a times of india uh maybe an amul uh there are some brands that you no. just become part of your life you know? and i think those brands are lucky those brands have done the right things over a period of time uh but others you know a detergent saying i can you know get husband and wife together and all this right is just a little to me it's a little obnoxious true thank you so much uh, kavala navin uh, for this very very candid conversation you said it how it is and that's the reason i love speaking to you thank you so much for joining us today I think there's been a lag in the consumers, but brands that have had a consistent uh, voice again uh, on that issue uh, have garnered more respect. But if you've been opportunistic, you're going to get, you know, sort of people can see through that now. So authenticity, uh, just say authentic. I think consumers will respect you, even if you don't say anything. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I don't know. There has just been some kind of a lag. So what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to share the overall uh, video with Latika or with Mariam. 
it all looks fine but just in the middle there are some spaces so i just might need to clarify with you later on sure. so i'll just no, share no that problem. with you even i got a message saying the meeting's been ended by the host and now you're using some unlimited uh, no no yeah, yeah or something like that. some right. message came through well, yeah. i assume that was okay hmm. how you been otherwise how are you doing miss bob yeah I, i just asked the same question how, how are you doing perfect how are you it's been good but it's been just too much work it's been too much it's it's very tiring and then there's a stream of dreadful news affecting your lives so it's a uh, pretty crazy right now and i don't understand how creatives in this uh, situation kind of uh, bring out work that inspires that's the reason we came up with this series because it's so difficult every day yeah 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 it isn't easy that's true to will yourself to come and look at the screen for 9 hours every day The video fatigue is real because video is a very intense medium. Yes. So that's pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, what is the plan like? When are you planning to start uh, office operations? Uh, the next next month or something like that? Or uh, are you planning to take more time? No, we're waiting and watching. Actually, we no. Uh, we'll watch. I mean, I, let's see what's happening outside in terms of cases, etc. There's no point, you know, twenty. 15 20 of us getting to office one of us falling sick and then the entire office getting quarantined uh, that's not going to serve any purpose it's going to you know in way interrupt our operations quite drastically if that happens so makes sense for us it's yeah for us we're going to sort of wait and watch i don't think we're going no hurry to I mean, like have, get back to yeah office. we haven't discuss, we haven't discussed it the two of us but i don't think before 15 july we are even considering it. we'll see we'll we'll take it as it comes because in a way you know miss by except for the fatigue except for the moments where you feel that you'd rather be together for some brainstorming you know like except for a couple of those things actually none of the work stopping you know, new client conversations whole client so focus groups depth discussions expert interviews everything is happening uh so the only thing actually that us and i'm sure everyone in the industry is suffering from is that they've been taking work to the level of the script and then it gets stuck because there's no production right yeah so once hopefully in the week or two that stabilizes then i think we can pretty much pull on for some more time right perfect thank you so much for your time i'm very lucky to have got the time both of your time together no, and no, i'm very no, grateful no, to you for all. making this time not at all miss miss boy it's always a pleasure talking to you so thank you i'll time. come thank and see you at your office some day once only if i get back yes. get back to normal yes yes yeah yeah please do please do all right take care see you miss boy bye bye